Answering just the question with honesty and patience, depending upon the circumstance, help them understand why anyone can have mental illness, be abusive, or abandon their child so they understand. So mental illness. If the child remembers, we're going to be curious. Tell me, what do you remember happening? What was happening for you? What did you see? What did you hear? Go through the senses. So utilizing the book will help them understand what mental illness is. But preschool and latency, we want to start with questions and letting them understand. You know how some people have a serious physical health condition in the body, like something they know. Other people can have a serious mental health condition. So you're not giving them their story. You're giving them an understanding of what mental illness is. My mother suffered from mental illness. Nobody told me. I needed someone to explain it just like this. Mental illness, which means the thinking part of the brain does not work properly like most brains do. When someone has a mental illness, they need someone to take care of them. My birth mother was hospitalized. That's when I went into care. They can't manage things. They can't work a job. They can't take care of pets. They can't take care of their child. Then when they're ready, your birth mama has this health condition called mental illness. You did not cause this problem in your parents' life. They had it before you were born, if that's true. Tween, like people have a serious physical illness, like something, you know, some people can have what's called mental illness, which means, again, the thinking part of the brain does not work properly. We're giving factual information. Your birth father has a health condition that affects his brain and ability to think well, if you know what it is, because not, there's many different types of mental illness. Your birth father has a health condition. He was not able to take care of himself, so he needed someone to help take care of him. He was hospitalized for treatment and has been there ever since. He receives medicine to help his brain work better. He cannot live on his own without proper supervision. How do you feel about this? What do you think about this? And you wait, you observe, watch, and listen. Drugs and alcohol, if the child remembers, you ask them. Another workbook, when a family is in trouble. Great workbook for kids to help them make sense of why someone turns to drugs and alcohol. Do you know we do things by habit without thinking much about it? You know, some habits are good for you. Some habits are not like biking and singing are good. Bad habits, junk food, bad words, smoking. Bad habits are really hard to change and can cause difficult problems for especially a family. And you can have a whole, you can have five conversations just about bad habits so that they get it. What causes addiction? When someone can't control a bad habit like drugs or alcohol, it's called an addiction. And that can cause a serious health condition. You know what that's called? Alcoholism. I mean, you're just having conversations. You're not relating it to their story. Using too much is toxic. It can cause a person to behave badly. They can even have a bad temper. And sometimes they have to go to a treatment center. Then... When they're ready for the answer, your birth mother has had a hard time managing her bad habit of alcohol. It has been very, very, what am I saying? Empathy, empathy, empathy. It's been very hard for her to stop because it's become a bad habit. Tween, at that time when you were born or four or five, your parent was unable to manage or control their drinking or drug use. They had no control. They could not keep you safe, fed, clean, and secure to finish growing up. You did not cause your parents' drinking problem. Really, really important. Kids need to know that. Child Protective Services. When a parent can keep a baby either fed, clean, or supervised and safe from harm, just explain to them how this works. Just like in the animation, a social worker from Child Services. 
goes to make sure that the child is taken care of and is sent there to help the mother and father fix their problems. When problems can't be fixed, they're placed into another home called foster care. Parents are given a case plan. You know what that is? It's like homework. They have parent homework they have to do. At that time, your mother had difficulty completing her case plan. She was a single mother. She did not have family support. Remember all those diapers and food that the baby needs? She didn't have financial support to keep you fed or mental health support, depending upon what is their story. We believe she gave up on this system. It was really hard. She didn't have the support she needed to finish her case plan to have you return to her. You did not cause this to happen. And emotional and physical abuse lead with questions so they can understand what drives lack of impulse control. Do you know when you are angry or super frustrated and you ever think or sometimes like you want to hit something or someone, you don't know how to be safe with your feelings. You feel out of control and you have no impulse control. Do you ever feel that way? Well, we need to learn how to have impulse control, right? And if someone doesn't teach us, we don't know how to be safe with our feelings with ourselves or with others. Sometimes a parent is not safe with their feelings and have not been taught some empathy for the birth parent, how to manage their frustration. We're not excusing, we're explaining. The child sometimes is slapped, screamed, or hit at. And a parent can feel out of control and can get their anger on children. It is also possible if their parents did this to them. It's the only way they know how to handle their anger. You did not cause this problem. You are not responsible for your parents' actions. Sometimes when people are growing up, they aren't treated very well. And they don't know how to love and be loving to other people. They hurt others because they are hurting. And they sometimes get angry and explode their anger. The person who was on the male side of your conception story didn't know how to handle his deep, deep, deep hurt feelings. And that person became angry and forced himself on your mother. And you're a result of that force, but you're not that person. Who you are has nothing to do with your conception story. And incarceration. You know why we have rules in our family? Rules are important because they help us understand laws when we grow up. When people grow up and they break the law, they have to go to a timeout place, right? Just helping kids understand why we go to jail and learn how to behave better. Then if they're ready, your mother made a decision that resulted in breaking a law. And she was sent out to a timeout place to learn. Sesame Street Communities has a wonderful kit for families in English and Spanish. You, your agency, you can contact them, get the kit, highly recommend it. It really helps children understand incarceration. It's wonderful. There's a DVD for parents and kids so the kids can make sense and think about this for themselves and not take it personally. It's not about them tween, you're going to give them the information, your parent broke this law, this is what happened, it may be due to the judge sent them to jail or prison, they will be there for this amount of time. Something that I do with kids, have attachments with their birth parents who remember them, who love them, who miss them, to help them with their grief it's called a loving kindness message. So you imagine with them, let's imagine sending the birth mom three loving messages right now. We're going to say them out loud and send them into the universe so she receives them. Parents begin. Or if you have a child who's very verbal, do you want to begin? Or they talk a lot about their birth family. You know, let them have the control. I wish wherever you are, you are not sad, you feel loved, and you're smiling. Parent, I wish you're healthy. I wish you're getting the help that you need. I wish you have peace in your heart. And when you send those wishes out, know that they come back to you full circle. <sighs> really 
helpful. But that ambiguity, especially when we don't know where the parent is, their AWOL, this allows that through line of attachment, honoring that relationship, honoring the grief, really important. And something that I use too with kids is a comfy doll. And you can get these on griefwatch.com. Kids need things. They need to externalize. They need to have physical dolls. So with comfy dolls, especially with a child who has an attachment, is grieving the loss of the attachment, I recommend getting a comfy doll. You can put these in the microwave. I think it's, what did we say? Three or four minutes. They can get really hot, by the way. Um, so maybe two minutes, depending on when you're on your microwave. And they're filled with flaxseed and lavender. And the child can hold and the doll can represent either the birth mother or the birth father or a sibling, whomever the child is grieving the loss of. They utilize through the comfy doll. They can sleep with the comfy doll. It's a transitional object and it really helps them process. Really helpful tool. 